Good evening, everyone at Praise Chapel Revival Oxnard. This is Pastor Johnny Montiel. Welcome you to our Wednesday midweek service. I hope and I pray that tonight's message inspire, encourage you, and bring you to a place where you have deeper intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ and experience the power of the Holy Spirit. As always, before I begin tonight, I just want to thank the shepherd of our church, Pastor Mondo Carrillo, and his wife, Sister Veronica Carrillo, for all that they do for the body of Christ. Continue to keep them in your daily prayers always. And as we open in prayer tonight, I'm excited for tonight's word. So join with me in opening word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for all that you are doing, all that you have done, all that you will do in our lives. We praise your holy name, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, because you deliver us from so much, Father God. And you bring us to a place where we can experience your power and your glory. Holy Spirit, we yield tonight's service unto you, and we await anxiously with expectation of the mighty wonders you are going to do, because the Lord's word is being spoken tonight. God's word is being spoken tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, and we praise your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Tonight, I want to talk about crossing the Jordans in your way. See, there are, are places and callings which God has destined each and every one of us for. For the people of Israel, they were called to the promised land, the place that God had rescued them from the bondage of Egypt and to bring them into a promised land. It had taken them nearly 40 years of wondering to bring them to that moment when they were about to experience entering into the promised land, where they're about to see entering into the promised land take fruition under the leadership of Joshua. Yet even though the promised land was in view. There was still an obstacle in front of the people of Israel in the form of the raging river Jordan that stood between them and the promised land. We too have grand places and significant deliverances and, and great purposes that God has promised and destined for each and every one of us. And just like the Israelites, we too have a place that God has promised us and destined us for. And just like them, we face obstacles that stand in our way at times. As we dive into what occurred as the Israelites stood across from the promised land and what occurred in them during that time frame, I pray that we get an insight on how God and all his goodness will guide and allow us to cross our own proverbial, if you will, Jordans that we face that stand in between us and what God has promised us. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Joshua and we begin in, in verse, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. And the verses say, Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp. You see, before crossing, there's always a waiting period. Before going into what God is destined us for, there is always a waiting period. Can you imagine the scene, if you will? The, the Israelites had been wandering for 40 years, and, and the promised land, it was right there, it was in sight. It's in vision, but they're told to wait another three days. It's right there, but they're told to wait another three days. Quite the test on patience, if you will, and quite the test of attrition also. Not only were they told to wait, but, but think about how they viewed the promised land or, or what was in, in, in sight in between the promised land. What stood there was the raging river Jordan that was in view also. And it must have weighed heavy on them. They, they probably thought we made it all this way only to be faced with the impossible, only to be faced with the impossible crossing of this river Jordan. The truth is, though, that the three days period was necessary. That period was necessary for them and that period is necessary for us because it allows them to, to get right with God. It allowed them to make things right. It, it allowed them to diligently seek the Lord, uh, to pray even, and to communicate with the Lord and prepare themselves for the crossing over to the promised land. And like the Israelites viewing the raging river Jordan, our obstacles that we see are everywhere before us also. And some may even seem impossible, but they are in view only to distract us. See, we can't focus on the Jordans in our way. We need to begin to focus on the promise of, uh, that the Lord has given us, the promises that he has given us, the promises of calling, the promises of his love, the promises of walking into the purpose that he has called each and every one of us to do. 
The word says that we just read that they camped before crossing. They took a three-day period of pause, not just to behold the obstacle in front of them, but also to reflect on where God had brought them out of. In our waiting to reach a destination that God has called for each and every one of us and has designed specifically for each and every one of us, it's no doubt it's going to take longer than three days. Months it will take, sometimes years, sometimes even decades. But in those times, we get to experience and reflect on all that God has done for each and every one of us. See, we can't squander those the, that waiting period. We have to utilize it to get into prayer. We have to utilize it to reflect on all the goodness that God has done for each and every one of us. We too may have to wait to get to the promised places and, and the things that God has for us. And we may even see obstacles, but we can't squander the waiting time. We have to relish in it because it's a time that God uses and utilizes to prepare us for going into the promises that he has for us. As we continue on in Joshua chapter 3, verses 3 through 4, it says that the officers went to the camp and, and giving orders to the people, they said, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the Ark. Do not go near it. See, it's crucial that in order to cross over to, to where God wants to take us, in order to cross over to the promised places, that we allow the presence of the Lord and God to go ahead of us. After the waiting time was over, it was time to move, not on their own accord, but, but through the direction of the Lord. The people had to wait for the priest and the ark to move before they began to move. Now, this wasn't a simple movement, but was a movement based on obedience a movement that didn't take place until the presence of God moved first and foremost. In the time of Joshua, the ark represented the very presence of God. Now, in this way, the, the people couldn't move until the presence of God moved first. And you have to catch this. They couldn't move until the presence of God moved first. Now, in our going to the promised places, in our getting to the callings and the destinations that the Lord has for us, are we allowing him to first and foremost go ahead of us to pave the way? Are we trying to do it on our own? They had to allow the very presence of the Lord to go first. The people were to stay a distance of 2,000 cubits from the ark, which was around 3,000 feet. Now, this wasn't just to keep a distance, but also to indicate God's holiness. Also to indicate how holy God was, how separated we were from his holiness. That's what it indicated. And we have to allow the presence of the Lord to go ahead of us. No matter how far the distance, we have to be obedient to that. And our making, uh, our, our making our way to the promises that God has set for us, do we move on our own or do we move when the presence of God and the Holy Spirit moves first and foremost? Are we making our way by our own direction or by the very presence of God? See, the people of Israel waited for the presence of God to go ahead of them. It was so important. And they did it in obedience. And if we desire to make our way to the promises that God has for us, we too must allow him to go ahead of us. In Joshua 3, verses 5 through 6, it says, Joshua then told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. And Joshua said to the priest, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. One thing's for sure. If we intend to make it to the promises that God has for each and every one of us, consecration, purification is truly necessary. The people a night before they were directed to cross, the people a night before they were, were going to see God doing amazing things uh, by, by allowing them to cross the River Jordan, they, they consecrated themselves. They, they sanctified themselves in preparation for what God was about to do. To consecrate and to separate meant to separate themselves from things not of the Lord and to focus on the Lord in expectation of the amazing thing he was about to do. They had to separate themselves from things of the world and begin to focus on the Lord and the amazing things he was going to do. Now, there is a necessity of consecration and separation and sanctification from things not of the Lord if we truly desire to walk into the promised places, if we truly desire to walk in the blessed things that God wants us to do. 
Yet many times we expect God to do amazing things and to bring us into blessed areas when we still have one eye focused on the Lord and the other eye focused on the world. And it can't be that way. We have to separate ourselves, sanctify ourselves, consecrate ourselves, present ourselves in such a way if we desire the Lord to take us to the promised places and to see him do amazing things in our lives. The truth is, if we want and we hunger to see God do amazing things in amazing ways in our lives, consecration cannot be neglected. Purification can't be seen as an option. It has to be mandatory. It has to be seen as necessary. Yet many times we think that we can bring our old ways, our old habits, habits, if you will, our old baggage into the promised places that Christ has for us, but we couldn't be more wrong. Joshua knew that to cross over in an amazing way, in a very amazing way, through the Lord, that it was going to take them to be freed from the bondage of the world. It was going to take them not to carry their old ways into the river. And we have to take that to heart. God wants to do amazing things in each and every one of you, each and every one of us. But oftentimes, the, the, when those promises are there, what we fail to do is to purify, consecrate, and sanctify. Because God wants to get rid of those old things, those old sinful habits, those old desires, those that old baggage. If, he, if we want to see him take us to those promised places, we can't carry that old stuff with us. And the people of Israel were told to do that, told to let it all go, told to consecrate themselves and to begin to focus on the Lord. And the Ark of the Covenant was walking in front of them by the hands of the priest. As we go down a few more verses in Joshua 3, 14 through 16, we see the amazing happen. It says, so when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan. While the water flowing down to the sea of the Araba, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. You see, though the crossing may seem impossible, we have a Lord, uh, the Lord, the Lord, if you will, of the impossible on our side. We have the Lord of the impossible to back us no matter what. See, it was finally time for them to cross the Jordan. The, the people had waited in obedience. They had consecrate them, consecrated themselves and had even obeyed the direction to follow the, the, the presence of the Lord first and foremost, to let the presence of the Lord go ahead of them. Yet now, the obstacle of the Jordan, the Jordan at full, full, full rage stood in the way. It was at full flood stage, the highest it could have been. The Jordan was at full flood stage. And it seemed like it, it was going to be impossible to cross. You see, when God takes us to new places, a promise, there will be adversity. There will be obstacles. Yet we need not fear the current, but we need to simply focus on the Lord and not the obstacle ahead. The Jordan may have seemed impossible to cross at the time. It, it, it may have even frustrated many. But as soon as the ark carried by the priest touched the water, see, not just the water, it says the edge of the water, it stopped flowing immediately. The Jordan stopped immediately. When we place the presence of God into our obstacles, they no longer become obstacles, but rather blessed moments where we can see the Lord in action. Amen. See the water, it says the water piled up so far that it reached other cities and, and the ark crossed unscathed, begin to cross unscathed. When the presence of the Lord touches your obstacle, if you will, no matter how grand it is, no matter how much they pile up, they're going to pile up away from you because you have allowed, you have allowed the presence of the Lord into your obstacle, making way for the promised things that God has for each and every one of you. With the obstacle out of the way, the people begin to cross what seemed was impossible to cross was seen like it was impossible. That, that Jordan raging and, and at full flood stage, when it seemed impossible, the people, because they allowed the presence of the God to go ahead of them and inside that obstacle, begin to cross. And the amazing continued to happen. In Joshua 3.17, it says, the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan 
and stood on dry ground, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. You see, when the Lord is in the center of it all, when he's in the center of no matter what you're going through, when he's at the center of it all, the Jordans that stand in your way, the Jordans that are in the way of your promises, don't stand a chance. The ark was in the middle of the Jordan and it became dry ground. The obstacle itself dried up and all the nation crossed on that dry ground. It's an amazing miracle making way for their start towards the promised land. You see, here's what we can get from that. That when we place God in the center, if you will, of our issues, when we place God in the center of the adversity, when we place God in the center of the circumstance, when we place God in the center of what is in front of us, no matter what, he'll allow those obstacles. He'll make those obstacles, if you will, and those things dry up, dry up. They won't exist anymore. When we place God into, into whatever we are, go, we are dealing with, whatever problems we are going through, whatever things stand in the way of us reaching the promised places that he has for us, when we place them in the center, we'll be allowed to cross those things unscathed also in a most miraculous way. Their crossing over the Jordan tells us so much about leading and going towards the promises that God has for each and every one of us. But one thing is for sure, one thing is for sure, that we have a Lord who loves us, who is able, and when we place him into the obstacle, when we place him into the center of whatever we're going through, he makes it all work out just like he did for the people of Israel. Now questions to ask for tonight. Are we willing to wait in preparation to reach those promises places, those promised places that God has for us? And most importantly, if you will, are we allowing the presence of the Lord to guide us, allowing the Lord to lead us and to go ahead of us to prepare that way for us? Are we consecrating and sanctifying ourselves from the old sin, the old ways, preparing to cross into those blessed places that, and callings and even those ministries or, or even those blessed things that God has for us? Are we doing those things, getting rid of those old habits, that old baggage? Are we placing the Lord right at the obstacle and in the middle of everything, knowing that he is the focus and through him, no Jordan will ever stand in your way. No obstacle will ever stand in the way of you reaching the promised places that the Lord has for each and every one of you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. For your word is mighty, powerful, wonderful, amazing, and grand. It leads us, it guides us. And through this account, Lord Jesus Christ, of, of your people crossing the River Jordan, you show us so much. You show us what it means to walk in obedience. You show us what it means, Father God, to get rid of the old things. You show us what it means to focus on you rather than the things that stand in front of the promises that you have for us. But most importantly, Lord, you show us that your presence is with us to lead us, to guide us, and to work in miraculous, amazing ways, if only we would get rid of the old ways and to seek your way and focus on you first. And Lord Jesus Christ, I know that many people in attendance tonight, they're, they're facing Jordans, proverbial Jordans, if you will, that are standing in the way of the promises that you have for them. They become frustrated at times. And, and through the adversity, Father God, maybe they become worn out. I pray that you inspire them and encourage them to set the focus back on you and to cross that Jordan by your power knowing that no obstacle will stand in the way, that the obstacles will pile up on towards the side and make way for them to cross over to the promised places you have for them. I thank you, Lord, because your word encourages us, it inspires us, and it guides us in a mighty way. We thank you. In your most holy name, the name of Jesus, amen and amen. And tonight's altar moment, I don't know what you've been battling. Maybe you've been dealing with huge Jordans that are standing in the way. Maybe the, the Jordans that you're facing seem like they're too heavy and impossible to cross. 
As we just read, God can do miraculous and amazing things for those who walk in obedience, for those who allow his presence into their lives, for those who sanctify, consecrate, and purify themselves, knowing that God's ways come first and not the world's. And for those who are willing, willing to place him at the center of whatever they're going through. The word tonight should inspire and encourage you to press on and press forward. So in tonight's altar moment, if you're facing a huge Jordan that's in your way, something that's blocking you from the promise, promises that God has for each and every one of you, if you're facing those things, we can seek the Lord tonight, place him in the center, and watch a miraculous thing occur. Whatever you have need for, this altar moment is for you. And I pray that deliverances occur. I pray that people be set free. And I pray that you begin to walk into the promised places that God has for each and every one of you. Let us pray. Lord, you call my perfection to peace. Jesus, you are redefining free. from dust to grace there's no other name spoken to liberate Lord you call my perfection to peace Jesus you Him from dust to grace. There's no other name spoken to liberate, spoken to.
to 